So I had the idea for what I wanted to talk about today a number of weeks ago, but in order to do that, I had felt like I had to lay a foundation first. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a conversation about stress, you know, recognizing good stress versus bad stress and saying, you know, hey, when this comes at me, is it really a threat or can I look at it as more of an opportunity or a challenge so that I can rise to the occasion and not see it as something that could potentially harm me, but actually something that I could learn from. And then last week, we talked about this concept of being anti-fragile, this idea that you can grow as as you come across challenges, you are always going to be challenged. There are always going to be things coming at you. Life happens to all of us, like we've discussed. But when life happens to you, if you've got this mindset that you're anti-fragile, meaning you go through things and you come out the other side stronger, you'll know that you will exponentially grow because we're going to continue to face challenges in life. Today, what I want to talk about is the internal stress that sometimes we feel, this idea of tension. We talked about stress and good stress and bad stress, and I talked about being anti-fragile. I look at those as sort of the external stresses of of life that come at us, the things that are happening to us or around us. But when I think about tension, I feel tension is like an internal tension. It's the tension that moves me. It's the tension between where I am today and where I'd like to be in the future or where I feel God is calling me to be. And sometimes we don't always know what to do with that tension. Sometimes it can be really good and move us forward, but sometimes that tension actually can become so strong that it becomes debilitating. At varying points in life and depending on where you are in your journey and your journey and God's purpose for your life or discovering that purpose, you might wake up today and think, you know, I'm exactly where I think I should be. But there's other points where you're going to wake up and you go, you know, I really expected to be further ahead in this area of life, or I expected to be doing something different in this particular area of life. You know, maybe there's been some decisions that you've made that have brought you to a point in life and you're going, this isn't exactly what I expected. And I think personally, I've found myself in more situations where I'm going, I'm not sure if this is exactly what God had planned for me or what I was calling for. And you feel at certain points the tension. Now, when that tension is in a positive place, it moves you. It's like a fuel. I heard one example. It was like the tension is like a zest. It's like a zest in life. It's like seasoning on food, right? It kind of brings out the flavors, makes things a little better because like we talked about before, you want to be challenged. You want to be growing and you want that tension to sort of pull and be a fuel to kind of move you forward as you're pursuing God's call in your life. But if it crosses over that line, I believe everyone has sort of a threat threshold of how much tension in their life they can handle. Like if your life is so far from where you thought that you should be, then it becomes excessive tension. Because when you're living in that moment of sort of this excessive tension, you lose sort of a hope for the future. I'm asking myself these questions. Am I so far off track that I could never possibly get back onto the track that God's called me for? If I made so many mistakes or I just feel that my life is just repeating, I'm just repeating the same day in and out, the same day in and out, but I'm actually don't feel like I'm making any progress. And then all of a sudden you lose hope. And we've talked about that, you know, hope for the future is power in the present. So there's sort of this spectrum in my mind of tension where you've got this healthy tension, it fuels you and moves you towards the purpose of God's life, or if it swings too far in the other direction, too far out of your threshold of what you can handle, now it becomes excessive. And now it's this sort of negative stress, right? It's hurting you mentally, physically, emotionally, and it's debilitating and stopping you in your tracks. My question today is, well, how do we come out of that? How can we keep ourselves in that positive space? To keep tension is a very positive thing because I think the tension should be there, but we don't want it to become a negative thing. We don't want it to stop us in our tracks or debilitate us from moving forward. So the number one thing we can do to keep tension in the positive part of our life, keep it as a positive fuel, keep us going forward, is gratitude. It's just being thankful for where you are right now in this moment. Look around, take stock, you're blessed. We always have so much to be grateful for. The breath in our lungs, the relationships that we have around us, the friendships that we have, the family that we have. And so taking stock of that, because when we can recognize our blessings, all of a sudden we're not comparing ourselves as much to you know the gap between where we are right now and the gap of where we'd like to be or where we believe God's calling us to. Recognize how much God has blessed you and is continuing to bless you each and every single day. So that first strategy is gratitude. Take stock, be grateful for where you are right now in this moment. The second thing you can do to keep that tension in check in a healthy place is to commit to being a lifelong learner. Putting yourselves in situations where you can read something that's gonna inspire you, you can listen to things that are going to inspire you, where you can connect with people that are going to inspire and teach you things. You know, I'm in my early 40s now as I continue to learn. What I find fascinating is I feel like the more I learn, I'm like waking up going, wow, the less I know. Like there's just so much more for me to learn. So I've tried to keep this attitude of humility, recognizing that I don't have it all figured out. There's a saying I've heard a couple times, you might have heard it. If you're the smartest person in the room, 
you're in the wrong room. Surround yourself with people that are smarter than you so that you have opportunities to learn from them. Smarter than you in all kinds of different ways. They know things that you do. They might have a higher emotional quotient than you do. You know, people have lived through so many experiences that you haven't, that you have opportunities to learn from. And when you do that, it puts you in a really positive place because God's gonna wanna work and pull you through that and allow you to learn. And it keeps that tension very positive because you've got the opportunities now to continue to learn and then so into other people. And the third thing to keep your tension in place, I'm gonna call it your output. What's the output? We want to have a big impact, but sometimes what you fail to recognize is that the biggest impact you can have is through the smallest actions. Because sometimes I think we're looking for big opportunities to make a big impact, but the smallest tiny interactions of encouraging and uplifting the people around us can have the biggest impact in the long run. Think back over your life. Think go back over the people that have sown into you, that have encouraged you. Maybe it was a teacher, or a mentor, a parent that have said, hey, you know what? You've got a gift here. You should pursue this. And how those comments have just change the trajectory or shift the trajectory of your life towards God's sort of purpose and his calling in your life. And how different would your life be without those key people in your life that have said, hey, you know what? There's an opportunity here. You've got a gift here. You should pursue this. Now think for a second, how can you be that person for someone else? Now that's not a massive thing. That's not this massive undertaking. You've got to design this concept or, you know, start a conference or travel the world or whatever it is. You can have an impact on the lives of the people that are already in your life right now. The relationships that you already have, relationships with siblings, family, kids, wife, whatever it is, who can you impact in such a positive way right now? And that's an output. Those tiny little things have massive impacts down the road, right? But you don't get to see them as big steps in the moment because you're just having a conversation encouraging someone. And now all of a sudden you're moving forward and you're taking steps in the right direction of encouraging and sowing into the people around you. And I know that God's gonna use that to do incredible things. And that's gonna help keep that tension in a very healthy place as you continue to move forward in life. So when you take these strategies and you live with that tension and you learn to use it as a fuel, eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna wake up one day and you're gonna go, wow, look at what God's been able to do uh, in and through me, the impact that's been available for his kingdom. And people are gonna look at you and go, whoa, what happened? How'd you do that? You know, wow, that's incredible what God's doing in and through your life. And you're kind of going, yeah, yeah, but God's been doing this with me and through me and, and you know, we've been talking with him each and every single day for years, right? The seeds that you're going to be sowing consistently over time take time to kind of produce a harvest. But when it does in God's perfect timing for his kingdom, right? It's incredible and incredible things happen. So I hope you can take these concepts, take these ideas, use them, add them to your toolbox, use them to uplift and encourage you as you go through your day and your week. Have an absolutely incredible, blessed rest of your day. And I look forward to the opportunity to connect with you again next week. Have a great day.